Now, if we do not involve the law of forgiveness, then we're going to have to go through what's the other thing called the law of compensation, a lower law. And it's going to take longer time to sort out the issue. And the only reason why we don't want to forgive, there's only one reason, and that is because we don't want to come face to face with this primary truth. Everything that happened to me everything that happened to me that was unjust where do you think I'm going to go with this? everything that happened to me that was unjust Natalie you want to see if you can finish it off? I created? No, I'm not going to say that. Rita. I have to feel it. No, no, don't just... Uh... I have to feel and forgive. You do, yes. Yeah. But that wasn't what I was going to say. It's very simple what I was going to say. Uh, if we go to Nina, just down here, and then maybe Dennis. Sorry, sorry. If we... we have to follow this chain of thought. So was created because we didn't have a desire to be in harmony with God's laws or, or didn't... No, you know, you were just born. You were just conceived well, and straight away things happened to you that were unjust. Well, somebody didn't want to be in harmony with God. It didn't want to be God-reliant. Yeah, but it wasn't you. No. So but how, isn't how, that the cause, though, that somewhere along the line somebody didn't want to comply? It might be the cause, but I'm not talking about the cause here. I'm just talking about a principle that we need to understand. Because once we understand this principle, you will start crying. Trust me. Ange? Is ours to forgive? It is ours to forgive, but that wasn't that what I was going to say. It was much more simple than that. If we go to Dennis, Dennis said his hand up. My soul created? No. I wasn't going to say that either. We could go on all day. <laughs> Everything that happened to you that was unjust was unjust you see once we really let that hit home we will start to grieve all of the injustice in our life and that's what we need to do you see what we've been doing is holding on to the injustice in our life and when we hold on to the injustice in our life we don't grieve it and therefore we cannot forgive is if we understand this basic principle that everything that's happened to me in my life that has felt painful in my life was unjust. And so I probably should qualify that everything that's painful in my life that's happened to me in my life that was unjust is actually unjust. And once we allow ourselves to actually realise that, we will be able to grieve all of those events. See, this is, this is the issue that I'm going through at the moment a lot. Just this issue of allowing myself to feel the injustice of how I get treated at times, the, the total injustice, right? And, under, and allow myself to grieve that it's happening. Just allow yourself to grieve it. In the first century, one of the th things I learned uh, early in my development spiritually, and it's taken me a bit longer this time to learn it, <laughs> is that forgiveness is one of the primary things that you can develop to actually work your way through things emotionally and get closer to God, forgiveness. But it's not what everyone on earth thinks forgiveness is. It's not what they think. Forgiveness is this coming to the realisation that every pain inside of me that was unjustly caused did have an unjust cause. 
and that all I need to do is grieve it, that it happened to me. I just, that's all I have to do. As soon as I fear it, or as soon as I want to feel that it's unjust and actually feel, you know, that, then I'm angry and I'll never feel it. I'll never feel it. Many of you are not going to ever feel things while you stay in the state you're in with regard to the statement of justice. You want justice. And I've said many, many times that justice is not love. It's not love. See, the, the reality is that many of you, if you looked from a point of justice, many of you would be fully justified becoming pedophiles. Now, shall I qualify that? Many of you have been sexually abused as children, have you not? If justice was the criteria in which you wanted to live your life, then surely that would then justify you becoming a pedophile of children. Because that's what happened to you. It's the same principle of like a murderer. If, if somebody murders somebody in your family, like your child, surely justice would dictate that you just murder their child. Then you're even. Doesn't it? Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, life for a life. Isn't that the concept that we have of justice? That's the concept we have of justice. It's totally unloving. Totally unloving. And while I do not face that everything that happened to me that, that I, I feel pained about that was unjust was actually unjust... I am not going to work my way through the grief of it. You see, what needs to happen on the planet is every single person on this planet needs to release the feelings of injustice that they have. Because if we don't release the feelings of injustice, we will continue to demand justice rather than love. And in demanding justice, we will do and perpetrate some very unloving actions. Whole wars have been caused by the feeling of injustice. Yeah. Whole war wars, world wars, in fact, have been caused by this feeling. So we need to deal with that. But that's a little bit of an aside. Can you see the causal emotion of why we feel things are unjust? Uh, that actually things happened to us that were unjust. <laughs> and we need to be prepared to just cry about it rather than doing anything else about it. But most of us want to scream and yell and shout and we want to be totally angry and annoyed and we want to take affirmative action for all of the injustice that has been done to us. And while we do all of that, we are going to create more Injustice. What we don't heal within ourselves, within our soul, we continue to create around us. It's the only result. Yeah. Pierre? Me, instead of feeling that it's un unjust, I would tend to feel that I'm responsible for what happened and I would feel like there is something in my soul that created and it's hard to feel it's unjust. Let me mm. just briefly mention this feeling of responsible, I'm responsible. So, you are not responsible for absolutely everything that's happened in your life. It's impossible for you to be responsible for everything. I'm not saying that you don't have a cause in your soul. I'm saying it's impossible for you to be actually responsible for everything. And the reason why I say this is, is this. That the moment of your very conception, 
at the moment of your very conception, a whole heap of damaging emotions entered your soul. And that was totally unavoidable by any act you could have taken at the time. Totally unavoidable. No, so how can you then say that you're responsible for the, those emotions that entered your soul? What's actually happened on this planet is we often have parents who tell the little child that they are responsible for what the parent is not taking responsibility for. And that's the emotion that prevents a lot, or that's the feeling that prevents a lot of emotion from flowing. Right. See, see, I need to come to terms with the fact that actually when you treat me in an unloving manner, there is a cause in my soul, if I get hurt or if I feel pain from the event, there is a cause in my soul. But I am not responsible for you treating me in an unloving manner because you could choose to treat me differently. And you are responsible for that, not me. Does that make sense? So you are, I am not responsible for every unloving thing that happens to me. There may even be a cause in my own soul that attracts the event, but I'm still not responsible for it because it's the person who chooses to act in an unloving manner who is responsible. And, it, and the point of that is that at the moment of conception, your parents chose to un act in an unloving manner in the sense that they chose to not release all of their emotional injuries before you were conceived. And if in the future we had some parents who chose to, to release all of their emotional injuries before they conceived a child, the child would not have any of the damage that those parents had and now do not have. And so therefore the child must not be completely responsible for what actually happened. Right? However, there is cause and effect involved. So there is a soul-based thing going on in the soul of the child. The personality of the child is the perfect child to actually help the parent work their way through their emotions to get to a state where they no longer have them. They're the perfect personality for that parent to actually work through their emotional condition. But they're not responsible for how the parent treated them. This parent is. And God's laws all address the causes back to every single factor. Every single factor is accounted for in all of God's laws. In fact, there's a statement you'll find in the pageant messages that say the wheels of God's laws grind with exceedingly tight tolerances and what they imply is that you can't get away with anything it will always be attributed to the actual cause see the law of cause and effect is also affects us in this way and that is whatever happens around me remember and if I'm involved there is a cause within me and if I choose to deny the cause and choose to act in an unloving manner, then the effect is going to, uh, that of, of what I create is also going to be attributed to me. So for example, let, let me give an example. A parent, a parent, maybe a mother or something like that, when she was a child, was abused sexually. She has a baby daughter. The parent does not deal with the emotion. She does not address the emotion inside of herself of the abuse. In other words, the fear that she has and the sadness and grief that she has and the terrible effect it's had on her psychology and so forth. She chooses to deny all of such things. As a result of the denial of all of such things, the child is totally exposed to potential perpetrators abusing her. Now, this is actually a loving thing. If 
you as a parent do not love your child enough to actually deal with your baggage, then what other possible reason could you ever have for dealing with your baggage? Do you understand what I mean? If, if, if the love of your child isn't a large enough reason for you to deal with your baggage, what is ever going to be a large enough reason? I, I suggest nothing is going to be larger than that reason. And see, th this is the thing we need to also consider, is that, is that the mother... The child may be abused, but the actual unloving damage that's been done to the child it was not only the perpetrator that caused it, it's also the mother. And it will be attributed to her. Her unloving behaviour of choosing to not release the damage will be attributed to her because of the damage that's now been done to the child as a result of her choice. Do you understand? The law of cause and effect will actually mean that mum will actually have law of compensation issues to deal with the fact that she did not address what had happened to her and therefore caused her child to have the same experience. She was a part cause of her child having the same experience. Not the total cause, because obviously the perpetrator was a large part of the cause, was he not? So he has the primary responsibility, but mum also is attributed the responsibility. There are many women in the spirit world who have yet to exit the hills for one reason only. And you know what it is? That they refuse to accept the responsibility of their own child being abused and their denial of their own abuse. That's the only reason why they're there. They refuse to accept that because they didn't release what they could have chosen to release, that, that this event occurred. They refuse to accept their part of the responsibility. And this is one thing we need to understand, is the law of cause and effect is real justice. It is real justice. All right.